So, uh, pop quiz. What is the longest work of fiction ever written? Is it The Lord of the Rings? Is it Les Miserables? Infinite Jest? War and Peace? Uh, if you answered any of the above, you'd be wrong. It's actually a Super Smash Brothers fan fiction. <laughs> uh, it, it's written by an individual known as um, Aura Channeler Chris. Uh, it, it's entitled uh, The Subspace Emissary's World Conquest. Uh, Subspace Emissary being the kind of the campaign, the, the story mode in uh, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Don't know if you remember that. Um, and yeah, it's like something like four million words long. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. I don't know if it's any good or not. Uh, I heard one person on Reddit saying it was terrible. He hadn't read it himself. He just heard from someone else who had. Um, that doesn't bode well. Uh, especially since I intend to read the whole thing. Because, I mean, the only way to know whether a story's good or not for yourself is obviously to read through the whole thing from start to finish and complain afterwards about how much time you wasted. I think that's a pretty, uh, pretty safe way to live. Uh... So without further ado, let's let's just get going with this. I'm gonna read uh, the entire fan fiction over the course of well, uh, some time, I imagine. It's uh, pretty fucking long. All right. Uh, so I'm going into this blind, by the way. I've never read this before. Here we go. So before anyone says something bad about OCs. OCs being uh, original characters, for those who don't know. This story only contains a single OC through the whole fic. Don't think this OC came out of nowhere, because there is a prequel to this fic. So my OC and Lucario could be developed, if you want to read it. Uh, I think I'll pass, if that's alright with you. However, the most important aspects of the two will be briefly shown in here to give you an idea. Also, it would make much more sense if you had read The Bond of Aura, so you don't get a wrong impression of this OC. Chris. I've taken precautions about the Gary Sues and Mary Sues. Well, with that away... Well, the start of my series begins now with this story. I hope you all enjoy this long story about the struggle of a prolonged fight against the subspace army. Basically, this is an if version of what would have happened if the Smashers... Fucking Smashers. Never defeated Taboo the second time they fought him. He's the, the final boss of the story mode. I encourage all Brawl fanatics to read on, enjoy, and review. Fuck, this is so cringy. Disclaimer, or a channel of Chris doesn't own anything in this story and future chapters. He owns only his OC. Alright, well, let's get going. By the way, there's like author's notes, like I checked. There's author's notes like that at the start of every new chapter. I'm not going to read all of them because I'll just take too fucking long anyway. So, chapter one. Start of Disc 1, New Game. Fuck, I hate this already. Subspace, deep inside the Great Maze. It had been a long battle for survival, but he managed to stop the imbeciles from defeating him for real. Taboo, though, had been weakened during the battle, as he floated along in the void of the subspace surrounded by darkness and swirling purple and blue colours, he reflected on the disastrous end of the battle. Master Hand had shown up right before Taboo could terminate the big group of Smashers. Stop saying fucking Smashers. As a last-ditch attempt, the, om the omnipotent Hand used his space-bending powers to recall each one of the Smashers to their worlds, back into the past before they participated in the Brawl Tawny and the war against the subspace army. He then called Crazy Hand, and both of them escaped from Taboo's clutches, effectively putting a sudden end to the conflict for the time being. Unfortunately, not everything was right. Master Hand couldn't manage to save certain Smashers. Roy, Pichu, and Mewtwo had been killed by Taboo in the ensuing battle. Furthermore, Rob seemingly betrayed them all by siding back with Taboo. It became a huger disaster once Mr. Game & Watch had been caught once more. There was more. An unlucky Smasher was captured as well in his trophified state. Master Hand didn't, want to, didn't manage to save that one Smasher, much to his chagrin. Taboo kept him as a prize, but he would help his... He would use his unrequited help very soon. Taboo grunted. It felt like an empty victory against the Smash Force, but he could at least relax and recover his power. As he pondered about what to do, a figure rolled into view over the cracked black floor of purple outlines. It was Rob, 
or rather, the ancient minister wearing his clothes. Um, spoilers. The robot was alone with the biggest threat the universe faced, but there was complete and absolute trust between the two of them. The ancient minister looked up at his boss. Lord Taboo, he began. What is your next course of action? Taboo remained silent for a few <laughs> for a few minutes. A few minutes until he spoke. My next course of action is to mobilize the army beyond this realm, he said. We managed to seize the land down below, even though I was weakened in this big battle. The minister looked down. It is going to take you a lot of time before your powers are back, right? He asked. Sadly, that is the case, Taboo said, nodding, his body glitching a bit. But until then, no one can reach us. It is dangerous for anybody to enter this place knowing that I rule it. I will muster up my power to create an ideal place for our base of operations. You, however, will be in charge of the outside world. The minister looked up and nodded. Yes, I will gladly reassume control over the facility, he said. Just give the word and we shall move out. I had my eyes on the other worlds, Taboo said. The worlds that those accursed smashers come from. I wish to conquer them all before they even have a chance to reunite and assemble their force, he explained. Once we have gathered enough worlds, we shall move on and conquer the biggest one there is. What? the minister said. Oh, you mean the rumoured real world? <laughs> yes, you catch on very fast, Taboo said. It is the real world that is the real prize behind the entire wall. Those fools do not even know about the real world existing, but they are missing the big picture. Fuck, the dialogue is so bad. He turned around. Ancient minister, begin preparations to invade one of their worlds. The facility is slowly being taken out from the subspace. I want a subspace bomb to be deployed in Ness's world. The minister nodded and turned around, moving away from his boss. It shall be done, he said as he vanished into the darkness. And so begins my long struggle to work with this person once more, the ancient minister thought to himself. This isn't the time to rebel again. I need... I need to find the right time. Why, why the fuck is he using parenthesis? It's speech marks. Whatever. The Gathering Saga begins. Real world. Chris's house. Living room. March the 9th. Sunday morning. Behind the scenes of the big war, in another entirely different universe, the real world was safe from getting into a big fight of epic proportions. Life continued its specific time of peace. What? Does he mean specific? I don't know. Today, however, was a time of rejoicing. A particular teenager with a big secret hidden inside the walls of his semi-luxurious house entered his home, carrying a bag holding a game he purchased that very same day. It was the release date of the game Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and he was greatly looking forward to playing it along with a very special person who took residence in his house half a year ago. He had paid the reservation in full as soon as the announcement came to the internet and the general media. Sighing, the teen smiled to himself and looked around his house, trying to find his special guest. Hello, I'm Chris. I'm a 16-year-old teen. You're getting this so far, right? Okay, I'm just making sure. I'm a 16-year-old. Sounds a bit like ASMR. Hello. I have short black hair, and you could say that I look Hispanic due to the color of my skin. <laughs> Truth is, I am Hispanic, but yet I live in the US, specifically Los Angeles, California, in a house where I rule by my lonesome due to some rather unfortunate decisions I've made in the past. Well, not exactly alone. I have someone special here who has taken me out from my horrible curse of solitude. That someone is really, really special because he's not a person you'd expect to find here around the city, or for that matter, in the entire world itself. Let's talk about me before you decide to hog that person, okay? Firstly, let me tell you this. I'm an honor high school student, lots of, lots of capital letters there, who manages to keep a balanced life uh, w while studying and playing video games. I'm a huge video game fanatic, but I look beyond video games. By that I mean I care about the love and effort put into every single game I have ever bought. I enjoy the story and the characters besides the gameplay. In fact, I learn so much about the values shown in some games that inspire me to find something good in real life. As you can tell, I'm a high school student with an everlasting dream to discover what I'm good at. And that's basically it about me. I'm an ordinary high school student living a pretty particular life due to that person I mentioned to you. I'm just going to stop here because it's going on too long. I'll continue some other time.